Hello everybody, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and today we're going to try something real different and real special. First and foremost, please feel free to like, subscribe, thumb bell, thumb bell -ina. is that even a thing? And also, if you are a fantasy fan and you uh, maybe are looking for the next fantasy book to get all ravenously obsessed with, my brothers and sisters, I have a fantasy book to whet all of your appetites, I hope. I apologize for saying the word wet like that. This is We Were Wizards. It is the fantasy novel series that I am writing. And you can currently get the first two books in the series right now, Seekers of the Stones and Ghosts of Wizards Past. They're available on Amazon.com, all over the world, in hardcover, in paperback, and in ebook. So check out We Were Wizards. Help support an up-and-coming author and read some darn good fantasy, because if I do say so myself, it's pretty fun. Here, you can freeze frame, and that'll tell you what it's all about. So anyway, as you can see right behind me, oh, there, 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 <laughs> I have on the table set up uh, some Marvel United uh, stuff. What we're going to try to do today is this. I am going to try to teach Marvel United as quickly, as smoothly as possible. You having a game night, you having friends over, you want them to know the rules and you don't feel like explaining everything, you don't feel like getting them to sit down with the rule book, maybe this video will help. I'm going to cover the basic setup as well as basic gameplay rules and then have a third segment that's some more advanced rules, some more little fiddly things for players to sink their teeth into once they know how the game is played normally. All right, so I don't want to waste any time. That's what we're looking at. Let's take a look at how to play Marvel United. The very, very first thing you want to do is figure out which villain you're going to fight. So we're going to use my buddy Ultron here as our first example. So first thing you want to do is find the Ultron dashboard. Check the back to make sure there's no special rules. Hey, there's no special rules. Okay, so you can just go ahead and get the Ultron dashboard set up in place. Get your locations and you're just going to take six of them, any six, and place them around the board in a circle, like so. You'll notice that each location has some slots here, as well as a slot right here, and an end of turn effect, which we'll talk about very shortly. You'll want to take the 12 matching Ultron Master Plan cards, which look like this, and the six matching Ultron Threat cards, which look like this, after shuffling the master plan deck, you're just going to place it off to the side. Then you're going to take those six threat cards and you're going to put one face up on top of the end of turn effect slot in each of the six locations. So do this until all six locations end of turn effects have been covered by a threat. Next, you're going to take a bunch of these tokens, which are known as civilians or thugs. They are double sided, so you'll always have a civilian on one side and a thug on the other. Going around the board to each location, you are going to set up civilians and thugs based on what the location tells you to start off with. So for example, here, you would start off with one civilian and one thug, whereas here, you would only start with one civilian. The rest of the spaces that don't have any indication, you can just leave those blank for now. Next, take these purple threat tokens with the skulls on them, and there's only six of these. You're gonna place one in each of the bottom left corners of every location. These threats all have different effects that thematically fit with the villain. For example, this threat, Ultron Virus, heroes starting their turn in this location must ignore one action symbol of their choice. So if Captain Marvel began her turn here and she played this card, she would choose one of the action symbols, either the move or the heroic, and she would have to ignore it because she got the Ultron virus, so she's not feeling very well. Other threat cards have this target symbol right here, and what that means is this threat only takes effect if the villain himself lands in that location. So if the villain's movement would get him to land here, then you would add one thug to this location. Finally, you have henchman threat cards, which look like this. They'll show a picture of a henchman. The henchman has their own health. Anytime you see this black heartbeat symbol, that indicates uh, health for a villain. So you're going to take a number of these health tokens and just place them down based on the number of health that villain has. We're setting up for a three-player game. Ultron's health changes depending on how many players you have. In this case, for a three-player game, Ultron would have eight health. 
Ultron also has a couple of these henchmen and they have four health each. So you'll just take four of these health tokens and put them right there. Next, you're going to take these three mission cards, which are clear threats, defeat thugs, and rescue civilians, and you're just gonna flip those face up and place them uh, anywhere nearby. Best place for them is right underneath the villain dashboard. Now it's everybody's favorite part. You're gonna choose which heroes you're gonna play as. So for this uh, mock three-player game, we're gonna go with Captain Marvel, Storm, and Captain America. So you're going to take each of their corresponding hero figures and place them anywhere you like on one location. That'll be their starting location. So because most of these people are Avengers, let's go ahead and stick them in Avengers Tower. Now you're going to take the corresponding villain figure. So I got Ultron here. Ultron is going to go right here in Avengers Mansion. Uh-oh. Home invasion. Every hero draws three cards to start off the game. So your goal in Marvel United is to take your team of blue-colored heroes and face off against a red villain. The villain's rules will always change from game to game, so depending on the villain you're facing, the rules might be completely different. So once you're done, this is what a fully set-up game of Marvel United will look like. Now keep in mind, this yellow cloth, this game board, does not come with the game. This is an optional extra you can get. If you don't have this, you can still play the game no problem. This just makes it a little easier to set everything up and organize it in just a more visually efficient way. In a regular game of Marvel United, your goal is to defeat the villain by depleting all of their health. Once you have dealt the right amount of damage and depleted all of their health, the heroes win. However, you can't start harming the villain at all until you complete any two of these three missions. Those are clear threats, defeat thugs, or rescue civilians. How do you do that? Here's how. Marvel United's cards use very basic iconography with four different symbols. Each one represents an action you can take. The green symbol is the move action. If you play a card with a green symbol, you can move your hero one space in any direction. So you can move them to the next location clockwise, or you could move them to the next location counterclockwise. You can even opt out of using the move symbol that you played and just stay where you are. The yellow symbol is a heroic action. These can be used in a variety of different ways. They let you rescue civilians, which goes towards this mission, or they help you clear threats, which goes towards this mission. So for example, Captain America here is on this space where there is a civilian and there's a threat card. Now, he could choose to use that one star symbol to rescue this civilian who's in danger for some reason. So if he does that, you take that civilian that you rescued and you put it on this card like so. And once you've filled that card up, congratulations, you've completed that mission. Instead of rescuing the civilian, Captain America could decide he wants to put that star to use to help clear this threat. So in that case, you would take one of these heroic tokens from the box and just place it on the card like that. And once you have filled that up with three heroic tokens, you can remove it. That eliminates the threat from the game and it also opens up the location's end of turn effect. So now that Captain America has ended his turn here, if he wishes, he can use that effect. Plus, because he cleared the threat, he can take this purple threat token and put that on the clear threat mission card. And once that's full with four, he can remove it, and that mission is accomplished. This symbol is a punch symbol, or an attack. You could call it either thing, really. And if you play this, it lets you attack an enemy. Pretty straightforward, right? So in this case, let's say Captain Marvel is here in Times Square, and she has one punch symbol on her cards to use. She has a couple of options. She could punch this thug up here. By punching a thug, you defeat them, and you place them on your defeat thugs card. Once that's full, same deal. You clear that mission, it's accomplished. But instead of punching that thug, maybe Captain Marvel decides the bigger threat here is this Ultron clone henchman. So she decides she's gonna do that one punch to damage the henchman once. That way she takes away one of its health tokens and once that henchman's health tokens are all depleted, bada bing bada boom, she has defeated the henchman, he's gone. She can put that purple threat down on the clear threats card 
and she gets to use the end of turn effect if she ends her turn in Times Square. The very last symbol is this here, which is a wild symbol. And a wild is exactly what it sounds like. It's green, yellow, and red, so it counts as any one of the other three symbols. So Storm could use this card to either move, punch, or perform a heroic action. Many hero cards also have special abilities above the heroic actions. These are unique to each hero, and they do a variety of cool things. So for example, Captain America is a great leader. So if you play this card, you can take a wild token from the pool, which looks just like this, and give it to any other hero. So in this case, Captain America could give this wild token to Storm, and now Storm has an extra wild action she can use on any one of her turns. Action tokens look like this, and there's one for each symbol. You can get these in a variety of ways, mostly through hero abilities. So if you were ever to, say, play a card that gives you one heroic token, you would simply take a heroic action token and add it to your hero. These can be spent at any time on your turn, and to spend it, you simply use the action provided by the token and then return the token to the supply. Now let's take a look at the villain dashboard. This tells us everything Ultron is going to do. The villainous plot basically spells out exactly what Ultron will do to try to beat us. In this case, he is trying to make sure all locations are fully occupied by either civilians or thugs. When that happens, the heroes lose. On Ultron's turn, he's going to draw one of his master plan cards and he's going to play it from top to bottom. So what that means is the first thing that happens is he's going to move clockwise, as indicated by this arrow, the number of spaces shown in the circle. So in this case, Ultron will move clockwise one space. Next, you are going to populate the spaces with either civilians or thugs, depending on what the card shows. And these symbols here indicate which spaces you populate. So in this case, that little target marker shows where Ultron is. So here you would put three civilians down in the space where Ultron is, plus one civilian in each location adjacent to Ultron's. Now, uh-oh, we've got a problem. That card told us to put three civilians down, but there's only room for one more civilian. So what happens if a location overflows? Well, the answer is something different every time, depending on who the villain is. Every villain dashboard gives you an overflow situation. So in Ultron's case, if you can't add a civilian or thug to any location, you add that token to the next location clockwise instead. So in this example, Ultron was trying to add three civilians here. So since he can only fit one, the next two will have to move to the next location clockwise. And look, that one is getting pretty full too. So that third one would have to come all the way down here to where the heroes are. So already Ultron is well on his way to filling up every location with civilians and thugs. Some master plan cards have a different special effect that the villain will use against the heroes. For example, this one says Ultron doesn't move at all. However, he mesmerizes everybody. So he's going to give a crisis token to each hero in his location and adjacent ones, and then place a thug in each location without heroes. Crisis tokens look like this, and they have a different effect depending on what villain is being played against. This particular instance says you give one crisis token to each hero in Ultron's location and adjacent ones. Thankfully, no hero is in his location or adjacent ones, but if you had, let's say Captain America was adjacent to Ultron, he would have to get a crisis token. So you would just take one from the supply and give it to the player controlling Captain America. Finally, the most common symbol you will see on a villain master plan card is this BAM. And BAM is always something really, really bad that the villain is going to do to make your job all the more difficult. You, again, start top to bottom, Ultron would move two spaces, and then BAM. So if Ultron's here, he's going to move one, two, and oh no, he's coming right for us. And once he goes there, he will BAM. So let's play a little mock turn here. If Ultron gets this card, He's going to move two spaces clockwise, one, two, and then he would bam. But first, before the bam, we are going to activate this effect because this takes place, remember, if Ultron lands here. So that comes into effect right away because he just landed there. And all we have to do is add a thug to this location. So we're gonna go ahead. Luckily, there's one spot left to add a thug. Boom. Now we can do his bam. So we just take a look at his villain dashboard and his BAM says he adds three thugs to his location and deals one damage to each hero there. Oh no, that's terrible news. Because 
all the slots for Avengers Tower are full. So if he wants to add three thugs there, we have to go back and look at his overflow effect, which you remember says you just start adding the thugs to the next location clockwise. So because those three thugs can't go there, they're gonna have to go to the next location clockwise. There's one, there's two, uh-oh. And the third one still can't fit there. So that's gonna move to the next location clockwise as well. Bad news for us. And last, it says he's gonna deal one damage to each hero there. Well, there's two heroes there, Storm and Captain America. So they're each going to have to take one damage. So what that means is the player playing a Storm is going to have to choose one of their cards and sacrifice it to the bottom of their deck. And the player playing as Captain America is going to have to do the same. And every time Ultron bams, his henchmen will also bam afterwards. And those bams do different things. So this clone will bam. They will add one thug to this location. And it says here, the heroes in this location may prevent this effect if each of them takes a damage. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. So you'll notice that around the board are all these spaces for a bunch of cards to be laid down. And that area is pretty much the heart and soul of Marvel United. It is in fact the United aspect of Marvel United. It is called the storyline. So let's take a look at how the storyline works. The villain always begins. They always go first. So you will play the first villain card. You will complete all the actions on the card. And once the villain turn is over, the first hero turn can begin. So Captain Marvel is going first. And let's say on her first turn, she decides to play this card that gives her one move action. So she can choose to move anywhere she wants as long as it's one space away. Uh, let's take her to the police station. Once that's done, you finish playing the card, you put it in the storyline like so. And again, if you don't have this mat, that's okay. You can still just create a circle or do whatever works for you as long as you're able to see your storyline because seeing it is important. Next is Storm. And now Storm has this card she wants to play that has a move and a punch action. So what happens is she is going to play it in the storyline. And now this is where the fun part comes in because this game is called Marvel United and all the heroes are united. They're friends, they work together. So not only is Storm gonna get to do a move and a punch, but she gets to perform all the actions on the last hero card played. In this case, a move. So for this turn, the player controlling Storm has two move actions and one punch action. She can use them in any order she wants to. It doesn't have to go move, move, punch. She can really do it in any order. So for example, Storm is right here. She could punch this thug as her punch action because it's defeated. She would put it on that mission card like so. And then she has two moves. She could choose to move once over here and then she could do a second move all the way over here and cover more ground. Now, if she wanted to, she didn't even have to do that. She could have just moved once and opted to not use her second movement and just stay there. That's totally fine too. But let's say she moved to shield headquarters because she wants to spread out and cover as much ground as possible. Finally, it's Captain America's turn and he has a card with two heroic actions. If you've been following along so far, that gets played into the storyline and that's right, he would get his two heroics plus the last hero card played which gives him a move and a punch. He doesn't get Captain Marvel's as well. It's only the last hero card played. So in this case, Captain America's got a big full turn here because he's got a move, a punch, and two heroic actions. And again, he can do those in any order. So let's say he decides to spend one heroic action to put a star token down here. Then let's say he decides to move over here. He has one heroic and a punch left. So let's say for his second heroic action, he wants to rescue one of these civilians in Times Square. So he's just gonna take that civilian and put it on the card. And then for his punch, he wants to punch this Ultron clone. So he's going to do one punch of damage to it and deplete the Ultron's health by one. And that would be his turn. After every three hero turns, the villain takes their next turn. So the villain would go again. They would perform all their actions from top to bottom. So in this case, Ultron would move five spaces clockwise and then place civilians and thugs. Then he would put Ultron's card in the storyline, at which point it is Captain Marvel's turn again, and she would play her next card. And she would get her move and heroic, plus the last hero card played, which was Captain America. So she would have a move 
and three heroics. And in this case, for example, if she had a move and three heroics, she could move back to Avengers Tower, use one heroic to rescue another civilian, and then use the last two heroics to put two star tokens down on this card. And since it's full, hey, good news, she has cleared that threat. So she could remove it from the game. She could take the threat token and put it on the clear threat mission card. And now that she's ended her turn there, she could use the end of turn effect of Avengers Tower if she wants. This one lets her search her deck for one card and set it aside. She doesn't have to do that, but maybe she feels like it. Now, even though you will always get the symbols on the last hero card play, you'll notice that some hero cards have these special superpowers that are unique to those heroes. Well, when Captain America plays this card, he will get Storm's movement, but he won't get Storm's atmokinesis power because that's a power unique to Storm, right? Captain America does not have the mutant ability to control weather as much as he would like that. So, sorry Cap, you can't use her atmokinesis, you can only use the movement, and that goes for every hero. Their unique abilities are just that, unique to them. These missions make up sort of the spine of the game, and you can complete them in any order you want. That is very important, and it's very easy to fall into the trap of trying to do them in a certain order. No, it's not the case. You can do them in any order you choose. But here's the thing. As soon as you complete any one mission, so let's say you had defeated nine thugs and you cleared this from here, right? This happens. The villain acts after every two hero cards instead of after every three. That's what's called being under pressure. Ultron would be under pressure. So at this point, he would become more aggressive. So Storm would take her turn next. And after Storm's turn, it would normally be Captain America's. But because Ultron is under pressure, no, he's mad. He's not uh, playing around anymore. He is going to go next. A villain under pressure is always going to be much more trouble for the heroes because he's just going to move more frequently and cause more anguish for everyone. Once you clear any other mission, let's say that you had cleared all these nine civilians and saved them, then the second effect happens, which is the villain is now vulnerable to damage. And that's the name of the game, right? We want to clear any two missions that we can to make him vulnerable. And once Ultron's vulnerable, all that means is we can attack him by moving into his space and spending punch actions or wild actions to punch Ultron. He has eight health, so we want to punch him as many times as possible. And once we deplete all of his health by doing punch actions to him and he has zero health left, congratulations, we have just beaten the game. The third and final mission, whichever one it ends up being, does not have to be cleared. It is totally optional. If you clear it, what happens is each hero immediately draws one card. So it's helpful, but again, totally not necessary. Let's talk about hero damage. Your hand of cards is essentially your hit points. And if you ever run out of cards, you are knocked out. So for example, if Ultron is in Captain America's space and Ultron does one damage to Captain America, Captain America would have to choose one card and discard it to the bottom of his deck. But uh-oh, He's only holding one card. So with that being the case, he would be knocked down to zero cards and KO'd. So you would empty his hand, you would take the Captain America figure and turn him on his side to show that he is KO'd. When a hero is KO'd, what normally happens is the villain will activate their BAM. Even if they've already activated their BAM this turn, they will still get activated a second time once a hero is KO'd. And yes, if the villain KOs multiple heroes on a turn, they will be able to activate their BAM multiple times, chaining together a fast and furious flurry of evil. And that's never, never good. So try not to get KO'd if you can help it. But don't worry, KOs are not permanent because on Captain America's next turn, he gets to stand his figure back up and then he gets to draw back up to four cards in his hand. So he is now with a full healthy hand of cards ready to continue his mission. If the villain plays their final master plan card, play continues as normal, but on the next villain turn, there are no more master plan cards to play, the villain would automatically win. By that same token, if a hero has finished playing their final card, and their next turn comes and they have no cards left to play, the villain wins again. So, to recap, 
once you have cleared any one of these three mission cards, you can remove that mission card from the slot. The villain will become under pressure. Then once you clear any one of a second mission, now the villain is vulnerable to damage. You can move into their space and use punch actions or wild actions to attack them. And once you have punched them enough times that you have depleted all of their health tokens, the villain is defeated and the heroes win the game. So in the basic rules of Marvel United, you have your blue heroes going up against your red villains. Plain and simple, but oh my God, purple. Purple wasn't part of the deal. What's purple? Purple characters are known as anti-heroes and they can be played as either a villain or a hero. Magneto here has a hero deck and a master plan villain deck. Now, of course, there is only one Magneto piece. So if you decide to play with Magneto as a hero, you can't physically face against him as a villain too in the same game because that's just not possible. Unless you own two Magneto miniatures, in which case, hey, rock and roll. Many villains like Magneto will have special setup rules on the back of their dashboard that changes the nature of the game. In this case, the Rescue Civilians mission is not used in a Magneto game and is instead replaced with a different mission unique to Magneto called Use Cerebro. Different villains will have different setups, so always check the back of the dashboard to see what needs to change from the basic Marvel United rules. Villains may also have special rules that always have to be taken into account. In this case, at the start of each villain turn, Magneto will always add one civilian in the location opposite to him. Again, always make sure you read all the rules on a villain's dashboard carefully because every different villain changes the rules just a little bit. Some villain dashboards, like Red Skull here, will even come with a tracker, and that villain's particular plot involves moving the tracker from one point to another, and if it ever reaches a certain number, the villain wins. As we mentioned before, when a villain plays a master playing card, these symbols here indicate what civilians and thugs they're placing and where they're placing them. The center icon with the target means that's where the villain is standing, and the two locations on either side of them are the locations adjacent to the villain. Plain and simple, and most of the time it's very easy to figure this out. You put one thug where Ultron's standing, and then one each of a thug and civilian on both adjacent locations. However, sometimes, not always, but sometimes you will get something like this where it's not symmetrical and it's not clear cut, right? This tells you that Dark Phoenix will only drop two civilians and she'll only drop them in an adjacent location. Nothing where she is and nothing on the other side of her. But how do you know which adjacent location, right? How do you know which one to put them on? Um, that's never specifically spelled out in the rules, at least as far as I know. So I do a little bit of a house rule for myself. So let's say, just for example's sake, that the villain is moving clockwise in this direction and they stop right here at the New York police headquarters. In the case where the card would look like this, the way I do it is I treat these spaces as the space the villain came from, the space the villain is on, and the space the villain is going towards. In other words, where they were, where they are, and where they're going to be. So with this being the case, this villain came this way and ended up here. So that's the space where they were. That's the space they're on. And if they had continued to move clockwise, this is the space where they're going to be. So in that case, I would put those two civilians right there in that space. That's how I would do it. There might be an official way, but that's worked fine for me so far. Some heroes like Wolverine here will come with a special card called a starting hand card. That's a card that needs to be in Wolverine's hand at the start of the game. So when you draw your initial three cards, you must always have the starting hand card as part of your hand. The other cards don't matter. Some heroes also have optional equipment cards. Equipment cards can be used at any time on a hero's turn. However, if you are playing with equipment cards, the rules state to balance the game out so that it's not too easy, you must remove the double wild card from your hero's deck. That's the trade-off. 
When you finish using an equipment card, you flip it over to show that it's been used and you can flip it back to use it again as long as you meet the requirements at the back of the card. So for example, to recharge a shield, you would need to discard an action token. There are hundreds of villains you can face off against in Marvel United. And once you know the very basic rules like we have gone over in this video, the fun is in experimenting with different villains and seeing what changes they make to the vanilla rules of the game. Some villains, for example, won't use threat cards. They might have some completely different system. Other villains, you might not even ever be able to damage them and you would have to defeat them in a more specific way. There are so many villains and way too many to go over, but based on which villains you own, the game is going to be different every single time you play. Some really complex games may even have you facing off against a team of villains like this Sinister Six game here. There really are so many combinations that you can try. All right, that's it. I'm sure there's probably 12 things I missed, if not more, and I'm sure people in the comments will let me know, but I think that about covers it for the most basic way to teach Marvel United. Uh, so if you're having people over, give this video a whirl. Maybe it'll help. I hope so. If it helps at least one game night get through their first Marvel United, I will have done my job and I'll be happy about that. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you here next time on Digital Charcuterie as we continue to make the wait for DC Superheroes United a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. See you next time.